So one of the questions that I get the most on this channel is how to get your first job in UX design. I think that especially in 2024, it's really tough to get your first job, especially as a junior designer when you don't have any experience in, in the field of UX. So usually in this channel, I share with you all my opinions based on my experience on what I think you all could do to improve your chances to get a job in UX design. But I think we're, we're gonna do something different today and we're actually going to read an article from another designer where he shares his insight on how to get a job for junior designers in 2024. So what we'll do is we'll read the article together and then I'll just share my two cents wherever I think is relevant. Also, for those that don't know me, my name is Ricardo and I'm a senior UX designer at Google. With introductions out of the way, let's go ahead and jump to the article. So the article is called How to Get Hired as a Junior Designer in 2024. And it's written by Rafael Di Mayo. Raf Di Mayo. I hope I'm not butchering your name. So apologies in advance. So Raf is the head of design at a company called Blue Yonder. And he writes a lot of really insightful articles that you guys should check out on, on his page. I'll leave his information and the link to the article in the description box below. And he also has a newsletter that is meant to empower designers. As I said, I'll leave the link in the description below. So as we all know, since the pandemic, the tech industry has been incredibly shaken. We have seen a huge number of layoffs as the pandemic hit and nobody in the world had a clue about what was happening. I feel that. Um, a few months into the pandemic, when people moved their habits fully online from buying food to socializing, we saw a boom of jobs in companies that saw exponential growth. And the pandemic allowed many people to have time to rethink their lives and make decisions about their careers. Many looked into UX and decided to enter what seemed a dream industry, which is true. Like I think a lot of the videos that you would see on YouTube during the pandemic before the layoffs happened, we're all talking about how much money you would make as a UX designer, the earning potential, the work-life balance. So a lot of people were lured into UX. And I think that a lot of that interest is still seen. That's why we have so many so many new designers in the industry. So a year or so after the world started to return to normal, those companies realized that consumer habits didn't change to stay, so the demand collapsed. With that, they started to lay off people off again. That, that's actually really common. A lot of companies grew, uh, they were expecting a lot of growth and they grew tremendously, but then what happened was that they grew too fast and a lot of them had to reduce their workforces because they ha they overhired. They hired more than they actually ended up needing. And then when you throw in AI, AI has also been a huge shift in the industry and it has it's starting to impact workers as well. I think that you'll see a lot of videos about how designers are concerned that AI is going to take over their jobs. I actually have a video on that if you want to check out up here. This is to say that the past few years have been a roller coaster and the industry won't be stable for a while. And that's something to keep in mind when you are entering UX is that the industry is in flux right now. So you are entering at a very tumultuous time. But I think that with anything that is in flux, there's also new opportunities because these changes that are happening in the industry are not happening in a vacuum. You can actually tap into a lot of the technologies that are changing the industry like AI, like Web3, and by specializing in those new technologies and those paradigm shifts, it could give you an opportunity to stand out from other designers by honing into the very factors that are changing the industry. So what should you do if you're a designer looking for a job right now? So there are, of course, we all know this, there are loads of designers out there looking for a job and you keep hearing that you need to stand out from the crowd, what I just said. You probably have a portfolio certificate in many case studies, but you're still struggling to land your dream job. The truth is that everyone has the same portfolio and certificate you have. So let's explore what standing out might look like for you. I think if you are a viewer of this channel, you've seen some of my older videos where I talk about how to stand out as a UX designer. I think it's one of the most uh, popular topics that people want to learn about because they want to stand out in the industry, right? I already kind of hinted at one of the ways that you can stand out as a designer and it's by tapping into some of the new technologies that you see in the field, which I have a, I have a suspicion that Raf is going to hint that in his in his article. So the first tip that Raf has is to master the basics. So the first thing I recommend everyone to do is to ensure that they are learning. Whatever certificate you have or use cases you have been working on won't make you a designer. Unfortunately, that is the reality. And I, I can I think what one of the reasons that Raf is saying that is that um, a lot of people that study at boot camps, for example, will have very similar portfolio case studies. There are some really common case studies that a lot of people have, like 
designing an app for XYZ, right? Like apps are a very popular thing to have a case study for, which is fair because a lot of products that in companies that you work for will have app products. So it makes sense. But what happens is that if you have a similar case study topic to a lot of people, it makes it harder to stand out. UX design is a very vast discipline and there are many specializations that you could work into. Therefore, do not stop learning and ensure you master the basics of every aspect of the job. The easiest thing to learn on your own in an artificial environment, and I mean not in a real job, is visual skills. So that is interesting. That is actually a, a really good point is that it is hard to, of course, get skills that you will more commonly learn on the job. But visual design is actually something that you can learn on your own. You can learn the visual design principles. You can practice your visual design skills. And if you have really good visual design skills, that will show up in your portfolio in the way that you design your portfolio, regardless of how you're making it. And that will help you stand out. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you're finding this information useful. And let me know in the comments what you think about this new video format and if I should make more videos like this one in the future. So one of the things that Raf suggests is to make sure that you master the tools and techniques and become confident using them. This can be Figma, as it is undoubtedly the most used tool for design. But you can also expand to Framer, Webflow, and Exuric. Practice making more and more designs from consumer-facing apps and simple brochure websites to enterprise software. Each design will allow you to face different visual challenges. And the more you practice, the more you can find solutions. Keep refining your skills by doing more work on understanding people's problems and mapping those out via various UX frameworks. You can also explore content, writing, interactions, and research. The field is fast. This is true. And this is why at bigger companies, you have designers that specialize in very specific things like UX writing, UX research, interaction design. I think one of the most popular exercises that I've seen is doing like a 30 day challenge where you practice or create a quick UI um, every day. And that helps you one, learn the software that you are practicing like Figma, but also practice different styles and learn UX patterns. For apps, there's very common UX patterns that you'll see across a lot of apps that have become a standard and best practice across the industry. So by doing a challenge like that, you can practice and learn a lot of those patterns and also like practice your visual design skills like typography, like hierarchy, all of those things that make up visual design. And also I like the idea of trying different industries. And while you're doing that, see if you resonate with a particular industry and if you find a space in a domain that you're really interested in and then that could be a way to differentiate yourself by specializing in a particular industry that maybe you have a background in so lastly be mindful that challenging yourself doesn't mean that you become a professional you are still doing this completely detached from a work environment and therefore you enjoy freedom that you won't get into a real job this is to say that you are still junior fair enough the next tip that rap has in his article is to stay curious very important Alongside continuing to learn, ensure that you go further than just design. Once you harness the core of visual design and user experience, which are pivotal to the job, look at additional skills and interests that can set you apart from others and make you stand out. These can be related to tech like AI or Web3 or unrelated fields like fitness, beauty, or photography. Yes, that's right. Even in unrelated fields can be extremely important. Now I'm going to get ahead of myself here, but I... I would imagine that the point that learning about an unrelated field would be beneficial is because if you are someone that is into fitness and you are very excited about that space, you can learn about the fitness industry and potentially cater some of your case studies to the fitness industry. And that would be a great way to differentiate yourself because it adds something that you're personally passionate about into the work that you are doing for your portfolio. So there are so many fitness, beauty, or photography apps on the market. And if you are applying to any of those companies, you can leverage your passion to stand out. One of the huge advantages for a hiring manager is to hire someone who understands the industry well. So be curious, explore further and leverage that knowledge. So actually, this is really interesting because when I was applying to my internship at Google, one of the steps once you've passed the technical interview is to interview with different teams. And I remember that I interviewed with the travel team and the travel team had different verticals and one of them was hotels. And that's the position that I was being interviewed for. It was for an internship within the hotels team. And what was really interesting was that when I was speaking with the hiring manager, we ended up going on a tangent about my background in interior design, because when I was an interior designer, I actually worked in the hospitality industry. I was designing hotels. 
So that background aspect of my experience working in hotels actually became something that helped me stand out from other applicants, which funny enough had nothing to do with UX, but it was something that tied my experience to the product that the team was designing for. And I ended up getting the internship with that team. So you never know where your experience, even if it's not in UX, will play a part in helping you land that first job. So the next point that Raf makes in his article is to ask mentors. The best way to learn the challenges of a real work environment is to ask other designers for feedback. Connecting to senior designers and asking for support is a great way to learn more about the real world. Platforms like ADP List have made mentorship easy and accessible, which is great. However, by mentoring on such platforms, I notice that designers come with such open questions that I don't think they get the most out of mentorship. I would advise going to mentors to show your work. And I don't mean your portfolios. I mean a small part of your work to ask for specific feedback. You can ask if you are approaching a problem correctly, if an experience map is correct, if a discussion guide is biased, or if your dashboard looks good. Go to mentors with very specific questions so that you can improve and learn. If you ask just to review portfolios, you get very little out of it. This is a great point because let's say that you have a mentor or that you um, are able to talk to someone over coffee and they have 30 minutes. It's really important for you to have an idea of what you want to ask them before you meet, just because the time that you have is very limited. Think about it. When you are in an interview and you are going over portfolios, you usually have like 45 minutes to talk about max, maybe two case studies. So in 30 minutes, there's not a lot of, there's not enough time really for a person to review your portfolio. So if, for example, if you are talking to someone that is working in an industry that you are interested in and you have a case study of a product within that industry, then you can take advantage of that person's time and ask specific questions about that case study and how they relate to their industry. So be mindful of the time that you have with someone because it's really valuable. And the best way to make the most out of it is to be prepared and ask them specific questions so that you can get the best answers possible in the time that you have with them. So the next step in the article is about career switching. So it says, I am one of the famous career switcher and I am too. I switched from architecture to UX design. He says, I have worked in tech for over 10 years, but started in e-learning before he decided to transition into UX. But guess what my first design job was? An e-learning platform. See, that's exactly what I was telling you all. I guess you know where I'm getting to. If you are transitioning careers, you have a great advantage as the professional experience you have acquired doesn't need to go to waste. Find the best way to showcase your previous knowledge in your portfolio and during interviews so that the hiring manager can see you are a great fit for the job. That's exactly what I was telling you about with my background in interiors and hospitality and how it played a role in my internship at Google. But I also know folks that have had similar experiences. I know someone that studied art, studied architecture like me and the first job that he got after finishing his boot camp in product design was actually at a startup in the construction industry. So his background in architecture played a huge role in landing that job because he had experience within the architecture industry. And you might think, oh, well, what does that have to do with UX? Well, remember that when you're designing for UX, you're designing for users within the particular industry or the product that you're working within. So if you are a designer that is coming from a similar industry, it's easier for you to build empathy with the user base because you know their world. That's an advantage that can help you stand out when trying to get that first job. He says, showcase your non-design skills. You might have done extensive project management work, facilitated workshops, or applied critical thinking as a consultant to solve problems for clients in a non-design capacity. Ensure you show that and do not be shy about your previous career. That's what makes you unique and allows you to stand up. Yeah, and besides the actual workings in the industry, there are other transferable skills like the ones that Raph outlined here that are still useful in UX design, especially if you're going eventually into a management position. Leverage your network. If you're looking for a job, tell everyone this is not the time to be reserved or shy, especially if you have already worked in other companies. Keep those colleagues close and ensure you keep in touch. The people you know might move to a different company looking for a designer. And there you go. That could be a connection that you have. We like to think that we are at the center of the universe, but unfortunately, that's not true. People have busy lives and they forget things. So the more you keep in touch with people around you, the better because it allows you to be at the forefront of people's minds when an opportunity arises. So yeah, leverage your network and make sure that people know if you're switching careers so 
they can connect you to potential opportunities if they come across anything that's relevant for you. And then learn on the job. The hardest part of being a junior designer is that you do not have professional experience in design. This means you haven't faced work challenges that have allowed you to become a better designer. However, if you already have a job and this is and this job allows you to put into practice some of the design skills that you are learning, it could be a great advantage. This is something that actually even happens within Google. I have met software engineers that are interested in tra transitioning to product design and they are able to start doing 20% projects within their roles. So if you can convince your boss to do things differently, you start to apply all of the things you're learning in your UX design courses. And then lastly, and I guess this is very important to keep in mind, is to stay positive. The journey into UX product design might not be as easy as you have dreamed of, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. Keep learning, designing, and connecting with people, and the right time will definitely come. Also be open to different types of roles. The industry is changing and new jobs are rising, so keep an open mindset. That's a great way to finish the article. I think it's important when you are entering an industry that is changing so much is to be open-minded about the positions that you get. Be open to internships, be open to apprenticeships, be open to shadowing, be open to potentially working pro bono. I remember when I was entering UX, I was taking internship positions at 28 and I was interning with people that were a lot younger than me. So don't be afraid to do that. Don't worry about those things. Just do whatever you need to do to get experience so that you can build your portfolio and your case studies. So I thought this was a great article. I mean, a lot of the things that uh, Raph talks about are, they are tips that are evergreen. Now, there's not really, unfortunately, a magic recipe or like a secret recipe on how to land your first UX design job. I think that when it comes to a tough job market like what we have today, is to try to differentiate yourself as much as possible because there are so many applicants out there. So. The best way to do that is to leverage your work experience, leverage your interest, and then also to reach out to your network as much as possible. And if you want to learn more about how to stand out as a UX designer in 2024, check out this video right here where I share my tips on what I would do to stand out in 2024. So I will see you all in that video. Bye.